Hi guys, my name is Christina and welcome to my channel. What I have in store for you today is a video about writing new comic three times. And what I mean by this is that I personally can definitely distinguish three parts of writing the story. And one part is when you're actually writing the script, second part when you're outlining, and third part when you're actually painting. And I want to talk in details about this and hopefully this way of me separating those stages and talking more in details of how to approach writing each of them will help you in creating your own comic or your own Story, or maybe it will be entertaining. So let's talk about it. details what those three parts are is that as I mentioned before first part is you actually creating the script for a comic you actually write dialogues you actually write what's gonna happen whichever form you prefer to do it for the comic I do it very loosely just write a dialogue but basically it's just that part of you actually creating words and describing what's gonna happen second part is what I call outlining I'm not sure if it's a correct term for what it is but basically what it is is where I'm putting lines on the paper when I decide what's gonna happen on each page and I I'm kind of scattering all the words of dialogue around each page and decide how many parts from the script gonna fit in this page and then I'm creating rough sketch in just black and white basically just black lines over the white field and I'm basically doing a composition of the page and at the same time I decide like what bit is gonna be on this page and the third part is actually going and coloring each page coloring each panel and making it complete and finishing it creating all of this detail color that I like for my comic and by the time I finish the third stage the page or the panel is complete so to me all of those three stages even though only the first one is actually writing all of them have this writing aspect and by writing I mean storytelling aspect I want to go in depth for each of them and hopefully you will understand why I divide it this way and if this system actually works for you because for me it's a very distinguished three steps and I notice and I've made a video about it kind of like talking about what's happening with my process and you know kind of thinking out loud about this situation I'm gonna link this video below it's a little bit like chatty I'm trying to figure out my own process and yeah if you guys want to wear something like this it's here but basically I'm trying to analyze my own process and in hopes to make it more coherent and efficient because efficiency is something that I'm really passionate about because my story is very long and I like very detailed style and if I can make it work faster I'm in what I notice is that just writing the script for your comic just writing dialogue or writing just description is not it for writing part at all because then when I start outlining I start rewriting dialogue and rewriting certain aspect and sometimes shuffle around certain things that happen because when I go to the drawing part I can tell that there some things better go unsaid but drawn instead or some things is better to be clarified or some things doesn't even need to be there it's obvious where you put text together with pictures so that's kind of another type of writing or telling your story basically I'm using script in one time it's like version one then script plus lines is version two and then when I go and start actually painting also on this micro level I do a lot of tweaks and a lot of changes to also make the comic work better so I'm gonna go in each aspect separately and I'm gonna tell you what I personally think is important on each stage on a premise it was saying that this is just my process and the way I distinguish my process and the point of this video is basically just give you an idea how you can break down your process or what process can be applied to creating of the comic and maybe give you some ideas or maybe you can use my process for this so it's very personal it's just me organizing my own process and noticing some patterns so let's talk about the first stage what I notice is when you script a comic it's not gonna be the final script by any means the point of the script for the comic is to put the ideas of what's supposed to happen in certain chapter or certain volume or however you divide your comic I divide them in chapters it's more like a bullet point where where I'm letting myself know okay which scene is gonna be the first scene which scene is gonna be the second scene and so on and what should happen in certain scene since I know what happened before is since I know what's gonna happen after in the story so I'm considering this chapter in context to other chapters and just been pointing what's supposed to happen here to make the story flow in the direction that I want I have it in mind and I literally in my script I put it as bullet points and then what I do write thoroughly is dialogues just because I want to get them on paper and if there's like some wordplay 
play or banter or something something else that's going on that is based on words I want to have it down by the time I start drawing so I write this dialogue in character so I already have this character specific things going on not only what I know is gonna happen but also I put this emotions in the words and what people are gonna say and kind of play with how narrative flows through dialogue in the sense that for example if somebody's hiding something the dialogue is gonna show this or if someone is trying to interrogate someone or someone's trying to scare someone or there's jokes or I want to create certain chemistry between the characters this is where dialogue is important for me on the script level this is where I stop with the script this is what is my writing past one or like the first version of writing is it's just knowing what's there what's gonna happen in relation to what came before and what's gonna come after and just creating a solid dialogue so for example if there's also several dialogues in the scenes I have like blocks of dialogues for each scene or for each instance of dialogue so this is what important for me on purely scripted level it's not complete writing but this is where I want to arrive at before going to the outline so now switching to the outline part this is where for me it's a writing version number two because this is where I just basically again use script so this is where I use script that I written as a guide and what I do I start outlining scene by scene each scene is a unit that obviously because it is a unit of the story it should has its own for some reason when I think about it as a composition I don't like the ideas of like rising action culmination climax falling action it's definitely valid terms and they're all very great but how I like to think about is a composition of the story a composition of the scene speaking about writing so it has to have certain wholeness to it and I think it's because my background is I started as a big artist I had major art school education I like think about things as a composition I even when I imagine my scripts they're almost visual blobs of action and I like to have them be arranged nicely I don't know maybe I'm confusing you guys at this point but basically I'm taking scene as a unit and this is where I start basically dividing the scene that I have written to beats and those beats each beat is gonna be a panel in all of the pages I would start thinking so for example one beat is for example a character asking for something second beat a character that he's asking something from is thinking about it then another beat he's reaching in his pocket and he's giving a thing or depending where well, you can cut some beats out or add some more if something is important if something in this pocket or what this per this character is handing over is very important you might have some extra beats so beat should be filled with necessary emphasis that makes sense to the plot that you already created once I identified those beats I start thinking how big and how important they are and obviously this really depends on your story and it really depends what you want to make an emphasis on some beats that are completely not important sometimes it's just an action in between for example taking this example of doing something if you have a character asking for something and another character gives it you cannot just have one panel when the character asks and another panel when character gives for me personally I think there should be an action in between when you understand when the character got this thing from and obviously it's not really plot relevant where the character got it from like from the pocket or they have it in the bag or I don't know somebody passed them or whatever it's not important but it's necessary for the flow so for example this beat will not be huge so I will not be making a very major panel out of it I will not make this panel a focus I will structure my panel so the one that has the most narrative weight will be the more focused one the biggest one and also I will decide what I will show on this panel for example if this panel about characters emotion it probably will be a zoom a zoom on their face or for example if it's about their pose I will zoom out to see their pose or for example if this beat is just about to show emphasis of time I will zoom really far away and show a little bit of scenery to just slow the action down and all of those small thinking processes about how much each panel should take and what should happen on each panel and how much emphasis there to me it's completely another level of writing and I still call it writing even though actually not so much writing is happening and it is very important because this is where I think the main story is getting crafted not on the plot point this is where you really have control of the flow of the story of the flow of the speed and this is where you can control the ebb and flow of pressure of stress in your story and uh, actually I have a whole video I made on pacing where I'm talking about how panels and zooms can contribute to pacing or basically the speed of your storytelling I will also link this video there I think it's uh, just good observation on the comics there's a lot of great videos about pacing in just novels but comics have their own tool set for pacing so I highly recommend you check it out my video but basically this is where on this line level on this composition level on this outlining level this is where you actually get your hands on the feel 
feeling of the story, how it feels, how fast it feels, how stressful it feels, the tone, the emotion, and the pressure. And this is where you can really, really play with this. And I really like doing it. And on this stage, I personally really like to put some music that actually matches the mood. I like certain music for certain characters or certain scenes. And I have this music on the loop as I'm outlining a certain scene. So this music really keeps me in the certain tone. And usually the music has a certain rhythm. And this rhythm in the from the music helps me to have very distinct rhythm for certain scenes. So this is kind of like how I like to do it. Also, as I'm doing this, because you really can experience what you're creating here by looking at it. So for example, if you're creating the script, you can obviously run through it or just, you know, kind of keep in mind what's happening. But for this one, what's very important, I would outline the page, outline a page, outline the page, read them through, read them through, read them through, like several times, look through, look through, look through, and feel what's standing out, go and correct maybe one panel, move a panel, and another place and I will add another page another page read those five pages through again and again and again and see the flow and if something in the flow of how I'm reading is creating friction I will go and correct it or if the flow is for example too smooth in a scene that I really want to be a little bit stressful a little bit high pressure I go and add something at this point I can when I finish outlining I can also think okay this moment in the scene needs to be stretched so I will add a page or this one needs to be cut out and actually all of these panels have to be on one page not on two so this is again like this is the writing aspect this is how I consider it and I do really like this aspect it's pretty fast too but I really enjoy organizing it and also while I'm doing it I'm keeping my lines pretty rough I don't care how pretty anything looks at that I, usually everything looks pretty rough and terrible but then after I feel like I got the idea I go and I draw through whatever I sketched out but in the beginning I don't really care about it so this is for me the second stage of writing that I actually think is is just as important as creating the main idea. This one is really what make your comic have the very specific feel of your comics. That's at least what I think. This is a very important stage. And the third and the last stage is actually where I go and actually start painting each panel. It is the longest stage of all three. And even though you're actually working of the script or the dialogue that you already have and of the outline that you already did, there's still a lot of creative decisions that you can do. Especially for me, those are colors and the way background works. Those are very important because they're also important to set the tone and overall the vibe of your comic in general. Uh, what I like to think for the colors is that depending on the pressure of the scene or what the scene is trying to communicate, which emotion, I will consider how to use colors. For example, I have one of the scenes where my character is encountering a monster in the abandoned village and everything is a little eerie and strange and she doesn't really know what's going on until she meets a monster and then she tries to figure out what to do and the whole scene I wanted to convey this feeling of confusion and not being sure and fear and kind of this on edge feeling. So I picked the color scheme. I usually just work in pretty realistic color scheme. So if the grass is green in normal life, I draw my grass green. So I'm not going in crazy color. My comic is very like more realistic style. However, I still can do some variation with color balance and with color combination. So I chose to add some fog into the location to make things a little bit more mysterious and add the feeling of you cannot really see everything so the reader even if they're looking at the panel they for example the character might not see their background but the reader uh, usually can see background of the character so I added a little bit of fog on the back so even the reader cannot really see the whole scene very clearly to create this feeling of instability and also I used colors like yellows and grays in the scene a lot even though it was kind of hard because I like to use beautiful colors but I tried to make the beautiful combination of like grays and yellows and the yellow is like a very cold lemony shade of yellow and I thought combined with gray is gonna create this sickly feeling like uncomfortable vibes like colder and because yeah, the yellow is also bright and the sun is rising over this fog it's great this shine so it's again the feeling of like I cannot see what's happening this blinding light of like yellow shade like very cold yellow shade is disturbing and blinding me me being a reader and the characters I wanted to create this feeling and it's you can do quite a lot with just the scenery and with the colors you choose to have and with the light that you have in your scene because the light can be warm and nice and cozy and safe it also can be blinding and harsh and very sharp and painful so you can really play with this aspect and also in the scenery if you're drawing for example woods you can make woods look lush and alive and green and juicy you can also make them look dark hostile and scary and mysterious and as if they're high 
hiding something inside of them that you cannot see. All these tiny details of the surrounding, you can play with them. You can also play with the wind or the lack of the lack of wind, like just complete stillness of the air to communicate action or communicate just calmness or eerie, eerie calmness, something like this. You can do a lot of things on this level. So on this stage, this is where I'm at and this is what I'm choosing to do and this is what I'm playing with. And also something that I'm playing at this stage is motion blur and I have a video about motion blur. I will link it up here if I already uploaded it. Probably not. I've been working on this video for months just because it has a lot of... I just go very thoroughly through me editing and editing some motion blur in one of my panels. But once it's there, it's gonna be linked here. Uh, but uh, basically, I add motion blur if I want to reinforce certain motion that character does or specifically do not use a motion blur, just show kind of like hairs frozen in the air or something like this to show that the action feels like frozen in time and feels slow motiony. So to me, even though this stage is also technically not writing, I still consider this aspect of it writing or storytelling, how do you tell your story, like another layer of information that you add on top of your story and that helps your story to be told in a certain manner. So this is to me another important aspect. How I like to do is, even though I have those three stages, once I completed one stage, I never go and change that stage. Because if you go and change and jump between those stages, it's gonna create chaos and you, I don't think, can ever finish your project really. So once I decided to turn this script hard, that's it, the door is closed, I'm not changing it, at least like it's some major change of the story, like on considering the biggest scheme of the story. So I don't change it otherwise. And then when lines are created, unless again, there's like change that is like a major, for example, this character just is not in the scene anymore, decided, or for example, something else is happening in the scene, considering the scope of the whole story, then I will address it. But other than this, when it's decided, it's decided and all my focus goes to the next stage. And I really give it 100% of my attention and try to see how the scene can be improved on this level or how it can deliver more of what it's trying to deliver, like how it can communicate what's communicating more clearly with the tools that I have and I'm using on the stage I'm working on. So I hope this kind of way of structuring working in a comic can be helpful for you because this is how I realize I'm structuring and once I realize it has been very helpful because now I have a very comprehensive approach to how I work on the chapter and with this system it really works really smooth and I understand what I'm doing every step of the way. So I hope guys this video is helpful for you and I hope the idea of dividing your work process and your writing in three parts to your comic is helpful. Thank you so much guys for watching and if you have your own way of writing your comic or dividing kind of like divide and conquer the process of writing your story or like creating what's happening on the page let me know in the comments down below I'd love to read it and other than this thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you guys.